this is our pallet jack which like most things that we have uh, is broken and needs work uh, the roller wheels if you follow on uh, Facebook and Instagram quite a while ago I put a picture of some new brackets that we had formed and some new uh, plastic I believe phenolic roller wheels for the end of this guy so if this was fixed this would make moving all this stuff on the ground a whole lot easier and the only reason we would need Johnny number five is to lift it up in the air or to move the really heavy stuff like for instance this truck cab which I think if this pallet jack was uh, in good operation it probably whip that around even easier than uh, Johnny number five. We designed and had this laser cut and formed to serve as a replacement bracket. Now this is obviously cast so we're not going to be cast but we wanted to come up with something, some type of solution to get our pallet jack back in working order so we can move stuff around the shop easier. This thing's been looming around here with this broken piece uh, actually ever since we got it for like several years so it, it, it's overdue on time. So this is the factory piece and you can see it has this extended offset. This is the area where it, the whole bracket uh, pivots in the unit and you'll be able to see that more clear. Uh, our simple part this would be this side has the base shape but we're missing the extra bearing area for the rotate so what we're going to try to do is cut out some stock and bore it on the uh, lathe so it's three quarters of an inch and then we'll add that little piece to extend in on each bracket the way it doesn't wear out real fast or break this at this corner out much like this one did so that's the plan we'll see how good it works so we got our bar stock here uh, unfortunately the lathe cannot swallow this whole piece so we're gonna cut off uh, two two inch pieces uh, and we'll have to machine them separately what we're really looking for is uh, four three-quarter inch pieces. So here's our blanks. We're going to go over to the lathe. We're going to put a hole in them. move up rather quick start with a 3 8 and then we'll go up uh, to the size closest to the bore that we're going to finish
impressed with these uh, silver and dimming bits that I bought. This guy's a little toasty, kind of pissed off. Worked great though. The thing that really made it work was these flats. Impressed. Yeah. So this is how I normally set up my boring bar. I put a center in the tailstock and I give it a slightly negative rake and I use the center to line up my cutting edge just below, ever so slightly below center. And I loosen the compound so I can rotate it to match the angle of the center. Makes it easier to line up. Now I'll rotate the compound to get the clearance that I want uh, this way. And this carbide tip's already uh, cut with the correct clearance, so I just kind of go perpendicular off the face or close to it. Okay, check for clearance on the bottom of the cutter and on the back side. We can go all the way through. We have extra room on the length here, so that's good. A little lube on the end of the cutter. Now we're going to touch off so we can set our zero. Gonna take small passes because this is a long cutter and this is steel. See how it handles 15 thousandths. Zoom in for effect. End product. So I need four basically uh, bore slash bearing extenders. And I wanted to complete this relatively quick process, not necessarily precision. So I foobarred a little bit, and specifically this one here. Uh, these are within 10 thou, they're about uh, 8 to 10 thou over 3 quarter. I was just using a tape measure. This one's like a 30 second under. I just eyeballed the uh, height of the units with the scale. And this one, because I cut crooked, actually is about a tenth under. So I'm gonna end up with one shorter one, but I'm not gonna remake it just for, just for that. So not necessarily happy with this, but for what it is, it'll work just fine. Not too bad for a rookie amateur who doesn't know what he's doing. pivot. This pin to cut is for the new roller. And the first pin we cut is for the uh, shaft that pulls back and rotates the bracket. So 
So here's all the new ones. I did have enough stock, uh, only by a couple inches, to cut another uh, main axle for the pivot on the bracket. Um, this one's worn pretty good. I didn't want to reuse that. Probably would have worked just fine, but I don't know. I just didn't like it. So we got these four new and these two old ones. These will work fine, but we're going to reuse. Right now we're going to pop these in the lathe, uh, chamfer them, and clean the paint and any burrs off that it might have. So I'm having trouble with the rods fitting in the uh, form piece. There's a little bit of inconsistencies uh, from the burn and the formed edge. So I have my homemade, uh, basically a flap disc. It's just a piece of rod with a slit that I cut in it. Take a piece of sandpaper, ideally emery cloth, but I can't find any right now. Put it in your slot and then wrap it around. So we're going to put this on the cordless drill, stick it in the hole, and spin it to clean out any of the uh, burrs or the inconsistencies from the forming. Marked and center punched all of these uh, bushing extenders and dropped that one on the floor. But, uh, you know, I uh, center punched them close to center. I'm not going to indicate them. I'm just going to drill them real quick uh, on eyeball. Uh, it's just for a greaser fitting. Okay, welcome to the precision welding bench here at the Flat Thunder Garage which doesn't exist. This is a, our concrete floor at the moment. Uh, we need to improve upon our weld bench. That's not something we do on the regular right now or have room to add. But anyways, here's the setup. You have the bushings that we just turned and bored that are gonna be a bearing surface extender for the bracket on each end. You have our new phenolic rollers and bearings and right now we just have the new shafts uh, or rods slipped into the brackets uh, to make sure it's aligned because it can move all sorts of directions. We want to make sure these bores stay aligned when we tack these uh, bushings in place. Okay, insert all the welder jokes now. I am not a welder, but that's definitely not coming off of there. Started to get better on the uh, this one here. That's pretty decent right there. And maybe a little there. This is the last piece that I did. 
Uh, I really struggle at welding because I don't do it enough. And going around, this is ugly out here, but going around in circles uh, is really a challenge for me. I think I did okay right there. If I could, if all of it looked like that, I'd be happy. But that's not falling off of there. I need more practice. Go ahead, insert all the jokes in the comment section. Uh, I am not a welder. So this is our uh, new roller. We have our new shaft we installed. Uh, the new three-quarter shaft is a little bit of a tight fit on the bearings, but uh, that's no big deal. It fits in there. It didn't damage the bearings. And then I have uh, some washers that I drilled out to three-quarter. Uh, those also are a little tight on the shaft, but that's no big deal. These are just here to keep the uh, plastic wheel from rubbing against the side of the brackets we just welded. Now our pin moves freely. It's bottom pins in. We have our roller in. And give it just a little bit of a gap there. I'm going to tack this shaft in position and then weld it. That's better. That's what I wanted to do on the other side. Uh, again, not a welder. Okay, this unit's uh, all welded as far as I'm going to weld it. Uh, we're going to put it, try to put it in the pallet jack, um, and I'm going to just weld the pins kind of like that into the pallet jack. And we should be good to go. This bar was supposed to have a greaser in the end, but it's uh, either broken off or not there. So I'm going to hit it with the, the drill and tap it. Uh, if I can't do that, I'll just move over and tap a new one. Must have been the same size, that's good. Best weld of the night right there. both ends put the other side in test it and then uh, if we need it I'll just put a little uh, tack bead of weld to keep it from moving too far left or right need a little weight to get her to come down let's go up again with it Just need a little weight. Alright, I'm relatively uh, happy with that. 
so the pallet jack is all the way down now and the jack is actually sitting on the bottom of the frame here it's sitting on this wheel but it's touching here on the bottom of this frame so to keep that from grinding on the floor it needs to be up just a little bit and to do that bracket here is where the plastic bogey wheels would go so we need a plastic uh, bogey wheel here that's big enough to raise this metal framework off the ground ever so slightly that looks like inch and a half day or radius No inch and a half would fit in there. Okay, looking at it from the bottom side, we measure the inside of the bracket. Inch and a quarter radius is probably about the max, maybe a little less than that. So it has to be almost less than two and a half, which would be inch and a quarter uh, radius. So. I don't know if that's really going to do the trick or not. So we're going to try to uh, drill it so we can press in the steel sleeve. Uh, this will keep the plastic from uh, wearing out around the bolt and then this will spin, we'll get a new bolt, but the sleeve will spin on the uh, bolt. our new bogey wheels machined we all we really did was uh, take a stock face both sides drill a hole chamfer it um, and uh, press in this little steel bushing for it to pivot on so when we put in the new bolt that'll work real nice Grease up our sweet little quarter 20 axle here. these uh, bearing bosses that we tapped for the pivot on the bracket. Uh, I don't have the grease certs yet, but we're going to use uh, one of my nipples. That way we can get it greased so it doesn't gall up. It'll probably be a little bit before I get my nipples. So we got them on both ends. Uh, and also this pull bar, this guy right here, we're attached to the bracket. Bogey wheels, they uh, don't touch the ground, but I don't know that they ever were supposed to. 
I think these might just help guide it over the uh, bottom board of the pallet. So, at any rate, we got both good bogey wheels uh, installed in the front side. Just a little bit above the ground in the lowest position, maybe a quarter to three eighths. So, that should help it pop up in the pallet. So you just saw us move a pallet. Uh, I'm guessing that's uh, 1,600 plus pounds. That pallet was way heavier than the truck cab, and it was a little bit of a chore to, to get the load moving. But once it started getting forward momentum, it rolled just fine. So we're gonna go ahead and say that this is a fix, uh, or that this is fixed. The only problem that uh, we still have on it, other than painting it up to make it look nice, is the uh, full down position, the sides of the frames will uh, rub on the ground slightly. So when you're manipulating it, I'll just raise it up, jack it up one or two pumps, because uh, you might still need to, for low pallets, I might still need to lower it all the way down. So I could limit the down position, uh, but I don't think I want to. I, I think I want to make sure it can go all the way down to get in thin pallets. It's flat thunder channel Christmas tree. It's big, it's tall, it's too big for my living room and probably just way too big for my house. But we have this nice new front porch slash wood deck and this really was the inspiration to make sure this was completed before the winter months. We uh, wanted to make sure we were able to put a nice big Christmas tree out for everyone to enjoy. And it just looks great with the colored lights and the snow on it. Nice bright star at the top. So I just wanted to take this time to uh, thank everyone for subscribing to my channel. Thank you for taking time out of your day to watch my videos. And Wish everyone a Merry Christmas. I hope you get to enjoy it with your family members and everyone has a happy holiday. Merry Christmas, everyone.